The Oscar-winning film director, Alejandro González Inaritu, once said, to make a film is easy, to make a good film is war. But for filmmakers in a country like Burkina Faso, the challenges are even greater. The West African nation has experienced years of conflict and instability. Its military overthrew the president and took power in a coup just last month. Attacks by armed groups linked to Al-Qaeda and ISIL have killed thousands of people and displaced more than 1.4 million people since 2015. In June last year, Burkina Faso witnessed the worst attack in its history that killed more than 130 civilians. But despite these extraordinary challenges, the people of Burkina Faso have tried to focus on the positive. Late last year, their capital, Ouagadougou, celebrated FESPACO, a pan-African film festival where filmmakers, resilient in the face of challenges, gathered to bring joy and hope through art. And that's where we caught up with one of the top Burkina Bay filmmakers. Born in 1976, Apolline Traoré's family moved to the U.S. when she was 17. In Boston, she studied film and had her first experience in the industry. Traoré returned to Burkina Faso in 2005, driven by her passion to capture in her films the sometimes cruel reality of her home country. We explore the art of cinema in Africa, not only what's on the screen, but what's often left out. Filmmaker Apolline Traoré talks to Al Jazeera. Apolline Traoré, jury member of the International African Film Festival, FESPACO. Thank you for talking to Al Jazeera. Now, tell us about this festival, FESPACO, that goes on every other year, every two years. What is it all about? It's about movies. It's about culture. It's about getting Africa together. It's about sharing uh, all culture. But I think that it's also a way for us to say that we are not down because my country is going through a very tough time with all of those ter the terrorist attack. And, and doing it, I think it's a message to say that, yes, we are going through all of this, but we're still up. So it's an act of defiance, this film festival? Definitely. Definitely. And when you say it's a message, what's the message here? It's the, a message that, yes, you guys are hurting us, but we're not down. And an art is also a weapon towards um, all of this, what is going on. It's to tell you the world that we still exist, to tell the world that um, although everything is going on like that, it is important for us to continue and not to agonize ourselves, um, pretending that everything is, is, is so bad and that we can't do anything. So that message is very strong for us, I think, for every Burkina Bay. And doing FESPACO is a message that culture can also help um, war. Now, we're in a country where there's an armed insurgency. 1.3 million people have been displaced. Most people live on less than $2 a day. There's a humanitarian crisis. Do people really have time to go into the movies to watch African cinema? Yeah, because we have to live. We have to take our mind a little bit out of this. We are part of this war, you know, and it's important. Um, in that same question, um, I was told that my next movie I shouldn't be able to, I might not be able to do it, but I fought and I've been fighting and I don't even have the, the go yet because the film that I'm making, it's about what is happening, it's about terrorism. And I wanna go up north and I wanna do my movie over there. And to tell, to, to, to tell you how it is, it's just that um, just before Yerebu, you know, that massacre that came out in June, I went to the north with the army and I told them about my story and they loved it and they said yes it's patriotic and we're gonna help you and we just went there and then I was I was like pampered I had like 50 people in the army that came, came with me right and then we went location scouting of where I'm going to be shooting this movie and then we came back 10 days later we had Yerubu and then everybody the was massacre, like the massacre hundreds of people exactly, killed exactly exactly and then my movie was at stake is like whoa, you can't go anymore. 
I'm like, yes, I understand. I understand that it's difficult. But the problem about this is just like, how are people are going to think? Like this country is in war, and then they are going to mobilize a group of army to help Apolline Traoré to make a movie. How is it going to be perceived? And my argument is like, my film is a weapon also. We cannot take any arms, we cannot take any weapon and then fight and help you. But we are culture, we, are, we, we can talk with the image. So my film will, I am not saying that it's going to cure this war, but it will probably give hope to the country. We're going to give hope to the, to the army people, to, to those people are, are thinking that everything is down. This is the way for me to participate in that war. Because for me, that's what culture is about. That's what movies about. But, but one would argue that, that that's also could be seen as propaganda. If you're just building government propaganda. Yes, but you have to look at the story. You have to, because before I go, I did not just go making a movie like that. I went to the people. I went to the people that were concerned in the North. Um, and I'm talking about the human size, you know what I mean? The, the, the humanity of each, of every people that are living this situation, you know? And what are we supposed to do as artists when, when this is happening? Should we just sit down and look? We have our point of view also, you know? And then our, our, our duty is also to, in a sense, give hope to our population and to tell the world what is happening in our country the way that we have to, we see it. And I think that it, it's, it's very important. How would you define um, African cinema? Do we really have an African cinema? Because every country has its culture. And if you look at a film that is coming from Senegal, if you look at a film that is coming from Burkina, you can see automatically uh, that is coming from this country or that country. The, the reason why I'm, I was asking this is about your film. Now, you're also a director. And yes. You, you made this film called Frontier Borders, where there's four women that travel from Dakar to Lagos, I exactly. think. Exactly. And of course, on an airplane, that's just a six-hour plane ride. But they're traveling by bus, these four women. What was the message of that movie? Well, the first message of that movie is like in ECOWAS, in the West African country, there are texts that say that we have a free circulation of goods and people. But when you go to the borders, that's not the case. Like I'm a, if I'm a Burkina Bay, I can go to, through the border to Abidjan, to, to Senegal, to, to, to Dakar, and no problem. With my identity card, it's fine. But when you get there, it's another problem. You have to pay some money. The costume people are going to do whatever you can even imagine. And I keep hearing those stories and I'm like, are you, are you serious? How come? There, there are texts. I'm like, well, that's what it is. And I've never took the bus before to travel. And I'm like, look, let me go and see it. So I did. I went to so Dakar. So you actually got on the bus? I did. Well, I, you know what? When I went to Dakar and I, I, took, uh, I took a car and we were going through. And I was with my crew, and then some of my crew were white, right? So we we're going in and we we're passing the border with no problem. I'm like, what is, what is going on? Why is everybody saying that this is so tough and then we're just going like that? And my, dri my driver was like, Madame, get out of this car <laughs> and go into the bus and you'll see. And I'm like, okay. So from Mali to Burkina, I left there behind in the car and I went into the bus. And I can tell you, Everything that you saw in the movie, I've seen it, you know, and it was terrible. It was terrible, you know, the people that, are, that will be laying on the floor, sleeping at the border because they didn't have 2,000 or 3,000 francs to give to the custom officer so that they can, they can cross, uh, which is illegal. I mean, what was interesting with that movie is that you were able to illustrate something that us journalists aren't able to do, to, for us to film a checkpoint, a border, is extremely difficult. Obviously, they'll shut down our cameras. So what, what is it that, in essence, cinema can do that us journalists cannot do? I, I think that if you get to the right people and then they know it's fiction, you know, and I think that helps because they think it's a movie. Uh, when you're a journalist, that's something else because they think that you are going to write by thing about it. And, and then when you put it in a story, uh, I think it's easier. Um, 
and it's true that when I started writing this film, when I finished, I called the, the head of uh, costume of our country. And I'm like, if he gives me the check, I can do it. If he doesn't, I will never gonna be able to do it. So I sent him the script, and in the, in the, uh, when, as you see, saw the movie, there's this guy that will rape one of the girls. And I was so, 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 so worried about it because he's a, he's a guy from the uniform that is raping someone. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna just send him the script. If he says like, oh, then I won't be able to do the movie. But he was such a great man. He read the, the script and he called back. I waited 10 days, he wasn't calling me back. I'm like, oh my God, I'm not gonna be able to do this film. And then one day he calls me and he's like, hello? And I'm like, yes, Apolline, I'm like, yes the rape. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> my film is down. But he's like, no, I understand, it's a movie. And those things do happen, but so you have, the, you have to go, go ahead and do it. The mentality in Africa, films is still an entertainment. You know, it's, it's not serious. Even when we go get money, you know, and even again as a woman, it's just to make people laugh or to make people cry. It's not as serious as journalism. So this is the way they see it. Even if we have big messages on our films, it's, it's still a movie. So a movie is just for entertainment. It doesn't have a point where you have to like fight for your ideas and then say something so harsh. Uh, they, if it's soft, they will take it as a, a just an entertainment. Now, let's talk about Fespaco, this film festival. Now, you're the jury member for the main category. Tell us about the different categories and the different films that you choose or you select to take part in this festival? Well, there is seven category um, in FESPACO. The main one is actually the biggest film that will get what we call the Etalo of Yenenga. And it's a lot of money. It's 20 million when you get that, that trophy. T 20 million CFA. CFA. They, they, they did documentary, so there's short film, there's animation, there's school um, films, and also they, there's a section that is Burkina, and there's diaspora um, also. What do you mean? There's a category for the African diaspora. Diaspora. They used to have it, actually. Um, but I think that they, they put it in the same competition, in the main competition. Because a couple of years ago, um, the African diaspora couldn't compete. People from Haiti, people from uh, Dominican Republic, um, Brazil, the black from the Brazil. Um, yeah, those you couldn't compete. Now, the, the UNESCO, the, sorry, the UN, um, had this uh, research done about the future of African cinema and it projected that it could bring 20 million jobs, 20 billion dollars annually and saying that, giving the example of Nigeria and Nollywood as being one of the biggest um, money generating industries in cinema in the world. Why don't we have this in French speaking Africa? The way that we make cinema is not the same. We have to rethink how to make a, a, a production. What do you mean? When you want to make a film, Nigerian had uh, the opportunity very, very early to make film and then that goes to video. And then when it goes to video, it gets sales very, very quickly. So it generates the, the income. And then a month later, you can make another film. We don't have that. We take a month or two months or three months to make a film. And then we're going to take another three months to, to edit it. And it's going to come out in a year. And then after that, we are going to put it on cinema. We, we, we didn't have that culture of, generation, of generating uh, income with our film. And then with one film, we're going to spend five years promoting it. So uh, I think that the mentality has to change first. But do people still go to the cinema? Oh, yes, they do. They do. Who are the people who go to the cinema? And why do they go? watch movies. Because they have that culture. You know, a um, couple of years ago when Fespaco started, I think we have like nearly 54 or 56 um, cinemas in Ouagadougou, you know? And it was a big thing for Burkina, you know? And we had the culture of going to cinema. It was something very, very important. Most people here live on less than $2 a day. Why should they spend the very little money that they have on watching African cinema? They have to keep their mind out of something else. When you make a movie, uh, a funny movie, the room is packed. Why? And if you, if, you, if you show a very sad movie, you're not gonna have anybody in the room. But when it's funny, it is packed. Why is that? Because they wanna laugh. They wanna not think about what is going through every day. You know, they need a, uh, they need a door to, to forget all the problems. And it is important. We cannot keep in our house 
and then just think about bad things every day. Coming to the, to the movie, watching a film, laughing, you get a little bit humanity in your heart. We met some of the filmmakers who had worked under the time of Compaoré, and some of them were saying there was an amount of censorship, that certain movies that they tried to present to the Fespeco at the time would just get rejected with no explanation. Is there an element of censorship or taboo in your selection of the Fespeco Festival? Not anymore. I don't think there is anymore. Uh, before, I think there was. Yeah, there's certain things that you, don't, you couldn't say, you couldn't do. Now, taboo, I think that homosexuality is one. Um, and I remember 2019, there was a film about um, uh, two lesbians, and they actually did select it. But after that, it was just a big talk in the, in the, in the country. People were like, like, no, no, you couldn't do that. You, don't, you shouldn't do that. But I think Fispaco has taken the, its responsibility, and then they'll, they'll choose what they want to choose and then put it in the selection. There's no taboos. For, for instance, relationship with the former colonial power of France. Is there? No, I don't think. Right now, no. But there was? Yes, there was. There definitely was. Because every time that you will have certain things that the government were not comfortable with. Um, you might not go into the selection. So in the past, documentaries like The Battle of Algiers or, or other films that refer to this former president of Burkina Faso, Thomas Sankara, that was killed mm -hmm. um, and has then become a pan-African figure, those type of documentaries or films were not selected in FESPACO. The battle of, of Algeria or anything else would be selected. But if it's sensible to Thomas Ankara and the president, then that's a problem. What is, for the viewers who might not be familiar who Thomas Ankara is? Yes, I mean, he's, he's, he's actually first one who actually helped to create Vespaco. That's one of the things. Um, and he's very important to us because he's a, as you say, a revolutionnaire, you know? He, he, he wanted Burkina to be free of any, you know, Western influence. He wanted us to produce our, our own goods. He wanted to, us to, to promote our own um, goods and everything, you know. And, and I think that he was, that he was young. He has those new ideas and, and, you know, and it's a symbol. It's a symbol of freedom. Sankara is, is, is really a symbol of freedom, and I think that um, that's why he's so important to us, and he's very important to Fespaco, because he's the one who actually thought that uh, culture and film is very, very important to this country and to the, our ideas. Now, it seems that African cinema is drawing the attention of, of producers in the Cannes Film Festival and other Western market. Um, why is that? Why is that is because we're still young and we still have a lot of stories to, to tell. Um, the Western world, I think that maybe they are saturated in, in all of the stories that they can say, you know. Um, so, so, but how are, how are African cine cinemas or movies different? It's different because we, there's a lot of stories that haven't been told. There's a lot of stories. Today, when, you, when, like, when I go back to the U.S. and I talk to my, to my colleague and, and all of that, um, people will say that, you know, there's no more original films, there's more, no original uh, stories. It seems like we've already seen it, uh, it's, it's made differently. But the good thing about Africa is just this is a new cinema, this is a new uh, culture of cinema. And then we have so many stories that haven't been told, really. Um, if you take each country, there's so many stuff that haven't been told. So we are lucky on that. And then we, 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 are, we, we should quickly make our films um, and uh, because if we don't do it well other people are going to come and do our stories. I, I want to go back in, about the the political element of, of the, the the festival. A few years ago Rwandan president Paul Kagame came to the festival and then Rwanda won the the main uh, prize the the Edelon d'Or or the Golden Stallion. Yeah. Is there political pressure in cinema? I'm the wrong person to ask, <laughs> you know, because I was in competition also uh, at that period. And then it was actually both of us were head to head. So it was either him or, my, or I. Uh, and people uh, come to say, well, they didn't give it to me because 
Kagami came, so they give it up. But, you know, I don't really believe it. But, again, I cannot tell you 100%. Uh, but if the film was well made, well, but I think at the end of the day, every big festival has an a political influence. We cannot get out of it. It's, you know, it's about the country, it's about a message, it's about a lot of things, you know. Um, the jury will probably make uh, some opinion, well, they're probably going to choose something, but there's always political influence in those festivals. There's always. How do you select? Now, you're the jury in the main selection. How do you select what is a good African movie? I think that every jury, that's, that's the biggest, um, it's the hardest part of being a jury because everybody comes with their own sensibility. But one thing is clear, as a jury member, we have to first look at technical quality because this is the base. We have to look at technical quality. If you pass that, qual that technical quality, we look at, I am very sensitive, sensible to um, acting, you know, to the performance of the actors. If you, if, if whatever great the film is beautifully, whatever, you know, theme it is, if the actors are not perfect for me, I'm out, you know. And then some, a jury can be, you know, I like the beauty of the film. Um, some other will be like, it's the team that is important to me. So we have to mingle all our idea together and then be able to choose one. And that is very difficult, very, very often. Why are there so few African directors, but also actors that break into the mainstream markets? There's certain code for me in directing. There's certain way of telling stories. If an African film, director wants to make a big screen, I think that they will have to stay in the U.S. and then use the code of the way that the U.S. or the, the, the French make the film, you know. The world is not, how am I going to say that? They're not, they're not familiar with our cinema yet, you know. Um, I've been so what are the codes of the African cinema? It's, it's different. It's, it's, it's our culture. It's the way that we dress. It's the way that we talk. It's the way that, that we, 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 we argue. It's the way that um, we, we love. It's, it's, there's so many other things that is not, this, uh, that kind of different. And people have to accept it. And, and I think that is a problem. I left the U.S. because I wanted to tell stories about my continent, about my country, about my people. And then, I mean, it was 1990, uh, 2001. And... I was trying to make my stories there, but no one was listening, no one was understanding, you know. And I could have been a great uh, filmmaker, but staying in, Buki, uh, in, in, in the U.S., yes, it would have been easier for, for, for that, you know. But making my stories it, and being in the U.S., it, it, it was difficult. And I was like, okay, this is a choice. I either become a great filmmaker that I will stay in the U.S. and I will probably be an American in 10 years, or I'll come back to my country and I'll fight to, to show my stories and then to show it to the world and then we'll fight the way that we can fight to show that we also can tell stories and then we are capable. But you guys are gonna, you're going to have to accept um, the type of movies and the type of stories that we are telling. Which and is, this is a fight. Which is? Which is our culture which is our culture. It's all about culture. It's all, it's all about um, telling people, you know, who we are. It's all about telling our differences. It's all about um, t saying how we live and, and how sensible we are in certain things. And maybe we're not seeing the same uh, way, but it's still universal. There are, I'm certain, viewers here who maybe are young and are watching this and may want to make a movie. What advice would you have to give them? First, you cannot just want. You have to be passionate. Because being a filmmaker, whether it's in Africa or anywhere else in the world, it's very, very difficult. Um, if you have the passion, no matter what obstacle you will get, you'll, you'll hold. Because it's, it's, it's such a rough road especially if the girls are, are watching me. Um, it's, it's, it's so difficult that every day in your life you will wake up and you say, I'm going to stop it. And it's only passion 
that will help you get up and say I will continue. So no matter who they are and what they want in this film industry, the first thing, if you have the passion and that you're willing to learn, you'll make it. Apolline Traoré, jury member for the International African Film Festival, FESPACO. Thank you for talking to Al Jazeera. Thank you.